<laughs> How's everybody doing? <laughs> every day and every moment is a party. <laughs> so we continue the series on the mutable cross. And this time we took Gemini, Jekyll and Hyde, Hacker and Jekyll, Lord and Hardy, Tom and Jerry. <laughs> Gemini, <laughs> the ruler is Mercury, the ruler of Virgo and Gemini. Gemini is my brother, my sister. <laughs> Gemini on the ascendant. Well, let's jump right in. Mm. Gemini. Jalobi, 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 Jalobi. Gemini is about variety, versatility. It is mutable air. And this air seeks to have a good time. The opposite polarity, the Don Juan, Sagittarius. Okay? So both are in the same polarity. They're both looking for a good time. <laughs> they want a good time. Let me tell you how it works. With Gemini and the Ascendant, you know, people get it twisted. For the first, people get it twisted. The Libra being cardinal gets the credit for beauty, refinement, Classy parties where you have to wear a tuxedo and a gown and look glamorous and smell rich. Culture, cardinal air, Libra. Okay. I, okay. Okay. True. I the big, you know, the big, I, uh, but here's the thing. Gemini also can be as refined and as classy and as eternally beautiful as a Libra. The esoteric ruler of Gemini is Venus. Don't forget that. And Venus in Gemini is exquisite. Just delicious. Delicious. The beauty knows no bounds. It kicks Libra in the ass. Okay. Let the cardinal gods of Libra get upset. But it's true. Gemini, Venus, is the esoteric ruler of Gemini. That's why there are so many Gemini women that are so beautiful. Oh, come on. You know that's true. Beautiful. And some dudes, too. So, because this beauty of Orion, which is the main stars of Gemini, such handsomeness and beauty from within and from without and refine it, it kicks Libra in the ass ten times. But I can say that too loud because Libra is cardinal. She rules the ages. Shh. Let's Jehovah get upset. Those are one of the movers and shakers. So I, let my words be few. So we cannot give this credit to uh, Gemini. It has to go to Libra, being a cardinal sign and one that heralds the ages, ruling a season along with her sisters and brothers, Capricorn, Aries, and Cancer. Gemini and the Ascendant is about having a good time and learning, but not go too deep. And not taking it too seriously. Just with a grain of salt. And skip through life being very light, very gay, very just plush. Gemini and the Ascendant. I see Nama. Hey! Oh. When, if you have Gemini rising, you go to all the best parties. You are a social butterfly. Plenty of drink, 
and smoke and whatever else is, is circling around the room that can make the, the life of the party just that much more fun and exciting. Mm. <laughs> Gemini on the Ascendant. Gemini seeks union with God through variety, versatility, and constant flux of changes. I see, I see, I see, Nama. Hey! Okay? Gemini is a breath of fresh air, just like Sagittarius. But unlike Sagittarius, the Gemini ascendant person doesn't want to live like that deep, that serious. Keep it light, keep it light, keep it light. Gemini and the ascendant. Understand that with Gemini and the ascendant, uh, the planet that rules part of your chart and part of your first house is Mercury, you know, and, and Mercury is the planet of communication and, and information. When you are in these parties and meeting all kinds of dif different people from different um, scales or walks of life, that in itself is a form of information that you are obtaining. The person with Gemini and Descendant can be a data collection specialist because it's about collecting data and then putting it together and creating a synthesis which pulls from the opposite polarity of Sagittarius where you get all the different bits and pieces of the puzzle which is represented by Gemini and then when you put it together you see a picture, a holistic picture, a mosaic this is reflected in the opposite polarity of Sagittarius, where the vision becomes clear and holistic, but broken up into different parts, unidentifiable, with Gemini and the Ascendant. But do you see how both work together? The pieces is Gemini, but the frame is Sagittarius that puts it in a synthesis. And when that comes together, you see the vision of Sagittarius. But it begins with Gemini and the Ascendant. Mm. Oh, the beat. The beat. <laughs> so understand that with Gemini and the Ascendant, it's not just about data collection and the different mosaic mechanisms of each piece of the puzzle. Each piece of the puzzle has its own weight, its own field of experience, its own morphology, which in and of itself is a secular experience. But when it becomes enmeshed in a larger picture, it enmeshes with that larger picture, homogenizing and synthesizing another vision or another expression of the original vision. And this is seen and held par excellence in the opposite polarity of Sagittarius. But this cannot happen unless you have Gemini on the Ascendant. Mm. That beat. <laughs> so understand that with Gemini on the Ascendant, the truth-seeking dichotomy and philosophy that accompanies that kind of position on the ascendant is a perpetual movement, not just physical movement, moving from one location to another or from one region to another region, because uh, Gemini, along with the opposite polarity of Sagittarius, rules travel. Gemini rules short-distance travel, while Sagittarius rules long distance travel. If you're in a car, that's Gemini. But if you're in a plane, that's Sagittarius. If you are in a ski mountain on a ski lodge, that's Sagittarius. 
But if you're in a jet ski, which you cover more ground and can even cross country and cross borders, then that's Sagittarius. So both polarities concern themselves with quests, traveling, movement, to see if they can find a commonality that can create or unite one fabric of experience with another. And if both can connect in a way that gives a homogeneity of a grand outcome of a definition of an experience, then it would have been worthwhile. Like Hercules and the 12 trials of Hercules. When Hercules won every single trial of all the 12 trials of Hercules, which represent the 12 zodiac signs and the different trials that he had to overcome, and he reaches that level of, of, of success, he has become God himself. So with the Gemini and Sagittarian polarity, the knowledge that can lead you to be challenged to exercise that knowledge or, even, or to even prove that knowledge is the, is the journey going back to God. It is in Sagittarius and in Gemini where man questions his own existence, questions who is God and what is his relationship to God? Is he a part of God? And what is the harmonizing as well as the antagonistic relationship between such a deity and man? And what is man to obtain from this experience that can make him a God? And does that mean overthrowing the current God? Now, these are perpetual questions that plagues the Sagittarian and Gemini person with such um, powerful needs to find the commonality in all and all of life. It's no wonder that the Sagittarian and Gemini energy is constantly restless. It cannot rest until a total synthesis or homogeneity is occurred mentally and philosophically as to the nature of God, the nature of itself, and its relationship to God and nature all within it. And then, what does that mean at the grand scheme of things? These are deep philosophical questions that are constantly plaguing the mind of the Gemini or the Sagittarian Ascendant personality. But it begins in Gemini. Mm. Oh, understand that Gemini represents the germinal seed in which we awaken to the possibility that we might have to question our own validity, question our own existence, and question if we are even heading in the right direction in our evolution. Gemini is the first line of defense and asking and formulating questions, which is why young Gemini kids or young Virgo kids or those who have very strong Gemini ascendants or, or Mercury, if you notice that these kids are always asking questions, always asking questions. You want to slap them in the face, they're asking so many fucking questions and they just won't stop asking and probing questions. This is a natural symbol and expression of the Gemini energy is to question. Because eventually, to the questioning, you get answers. Answers that can lead to the ultimate truth. But the ultimate truth really doesn't exist. Because truth is relative. And is different by every interpreter of the truth. And this is true when we're dealing with Sagittarius, but especially Gemini and the Ascendant. Oh, it's deep. And it gets deeper than this. Gemini and the Ascendant. Oh, the being. The, the sensuality of it. So, understand that Mercury has probably endowed the person with the Gemini Ascendant and also the Virgo ascendant, a certain degree of cautious and, and suspicious attitudes towards other people. You know, 
the person with a Gemini rising or a Virgo rising is not trusting. Not really true of Virgo. With Gemini and the Ascendant, don't get it twisted. These people don't trust you. They might appear like they do. That again, the chameleon. Like Pisces. Right? You know, these are dual signs. You know, so understand that you have a certain impenetrability with Gemini and the Ascendant. Gemini is not interested in winning you over. If anything, the person with the Gemini Ascendant is suspicious of you and cunning and calculating. But what can put those impulses to rest with the person that's been stirred, which will be the person with the Gemini Ascendant, or even the Sagittarian Ascendant, is if a certain level of mental acuity or intelligence is expressed. If the Gemini Ascendant person can um, detect and even respect and even measure or test, better yet, a certain degree of your intelligence by picking your brain. It can be happy and satisfied and calm and at peace with you if it knows that you possess a certain level of intelligence. And But that in itself is also paradoxical. Because, you know, the Gemini ascended person has no tolerance at all for mental slowness and basal or basic mental acuity. The Gemini ascendant person is not going to tolerate or entertain minimal or basal expression of the human intellect. Either you are mentally astute or you are not. And if you're not, then you must not have had the education or the parameters on your upbringing or in your development to have a worry with those opportunities to develop your mind in the way that most people do, consensusly speaking. Now, this is why the Gemini personality and descendant could care less about your emotional index, but more so of your mental acuity. And if this is not shown or expressed to the satisfaction of the person born with Gemini and the Ascendant or the Sun sign Gemini, then these people will tend to dismiss you and dismiss anything and everything about you. This in itself is kind of intellectually bigoted. But then again, the air signs are known for being intellectual bigots. Gemini is no exception and the Ascendant. I, the B, I, I need to go back to theater. I need to go back to the theater. I got too much fire in me. <laughs> I'm going to try not to make this about me. But understand that with Gemini and the life is not taken seriously. Life is taken very light. Mm. Mutable air. You know, you don't know where the chips may lie. But wherever they lie, it's all right. Because those born with Gemini and descendant are natural born survivors. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gemini. And the ascendant. Okay. Let's see if I can roll the spliff. I'm, I'm holding it like. Did I do it right? You know, I'm a late bloomer. I haven't started doing drugs like this until my late 30s. I never did this in my 20s or in my teen years. I was a straight laced ultra Catholic boy. Yeah, we are the worst. <sighs> okay? So understand that when you have Gemini and the Ascendant, 
You, your personality comes out very strong and very opinionated. And that might not have anything to do with how you feel about a particular issue, but it could just be the way that you express yourself. And the way you express yourself, personality, that's, that's something that's cultivated. That's something that's groomed by your environment, your upbringing. Those are factors that add to who you are. It might not necessarily be personal. Okay? Common sense is your best friend when, it, when you're trying to explain your ideas and your thoughts. You're not going to meet eye to eye with everybody. Routine and monotony are two words you absolutely detest. You don't like routine and you don't like monotony. You want to follow your spirit and be adventurous because that leads to interesting experiences which can be full of excitement. And Gemini lives for that adrenaline of excitement either through physical action or to the physicality of the mind because you can go through some very powerful head trips mentally and can have just as much fun mentally as you do in the waking life. Gemini and the Ascendant. Mm. Okay? So understand that with Gemini and the Ascendant, you are funny. People perceive you as being funny. You can be quiet and playful, seductive and flirtatious. When your defense mess your when your defense mechanisms are not up and you're not afraid of being judged, you could be the true pulse or heartbeat. Heartbeat, you make me feel so weak. Remember that song from the 80s? No, from the 70s. Ooh, mm, no, no, let me not go there. <laughs> Understand that the heartbeat of Gemini is to be plugged in at the moment and have fun at the moment. When she or he is in that state, they become the life of the party, the soul essence for being at that party. You don't see the esoteric Venus, the esoteric ruler of Venus, shine more brightly than when the Gemini woman or the Gemini man is in their element doing their thing. Okay, it's fascinating. It's fascinating, Gemini. And the ascendant. Cha 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 cha. <laughs> I love Gemini. It's my it's my other half, ruled by Mercury, the ruler of both Virgo and Gemini. Gemini. A little on the shadow side. With Gemini and the Ascendant, you usually get bored. And you could change jobs, change relationships, break up with people. And let me tell you, they ain't gonna see it coming. They ain't gonna see it coming. Uh, I'm serious. Gemini and the Ascendant. But the opposite polarity, which is Sagittarius, which deals with foreigners and foreign relationships, is also something inherent with the Gemini Ascendant. When you have Gemini and the Ascendant, you can be very diplomatic, very arbitrary, very classy and beautiful. Even though Sagittarius should get the credit for that because it deals with foreign relations, it's a mutable sign. So it doesn't get the credit. The credit falls to the cardinal sign of Libra, which deals with uh, diplomatic relationships, ambassadorship, 
economic and political posturing and the art of politics itself. Cardinal Air. This goes to Libra. The trine of air with Gemini and Aquarius. But that's you know. <clears throat> so understand that the requirements of Gemini and the Ascendant can be just as harsh or just as demanding as that of Libra and the Ascendant. And we're past 27 seconds. We're done with Gemini.